Well, thank you for asking me to speak at this conference. Uh, my name is Andrew Lotry, I'm Professor of Ophthalmology at the University of Southampton. And what I'd like to do is give you some clinical trial updates on three conditions that I'm working on at the moment. And these are age-related macular degeneration, central serous retinopathy, and Stargardt disease. So these are all common, reasonably common causes of uh, visual impairment uh, due to retinal diseases. Let's get my slides to advance. There we go. And before I start talking about these studies, um, I, I just think it's important to mention a couple of things about clinical trials in general. And that is um, about ex expectations about trials. And it's important to realize that trials are not definitive treatments for conditions. However, they are the only way we will get to better treatments. And even if a trial is negative, it still has a positive effect in terms of hospitals that do clinical trials seem to get better clinical care in general. And I think that's an important point as well. So I would encourage you to ask your doctors, if you are being seen in hospital eye services, is there a clinical trial that I can be involved in? And the reason I say that clinical trials improve clinical care is because of there is published work to support this. And what I'm showing now is a graph of the mortality in hospitals in, uh, in England, uh, hospitals. Um, and that mortality can be low, expected, or high. And plotted on the other axis is the research funding in different hospitals. And so the hospitals that have the highest rates of research funding very significantly have the lowest mortality rates. And I think what this says is that hospitals that are research active uh, do the best clinical work as well. And so it's important to do clinical trials, not only to find better treatments, but also because it raises our our standards of our routine clinical care as well. So on that note, um, I'd just like to move on and talk about some of the trials that I'm involved in. And one of them is a study called the Pinnacle Study, which is a collaborative study funded by the Wellcome Trust with researchers from uh, literally all over the world working on this study. And this is a study of age-related macular degeneration. And we are hoping to use the power of computers and what's called artificial intelligence to better understand what causes uh, macular degeneration to develop and to progress. So I have a picture here of the back of someone's eye on screen. And uh, it, it's a normal looking picture. And, and if you asked an eye doctor what information they could glean from this picture, they could say, well, it looks relatively healthy. It's the right eye of a patient. Um, and that's about all you could say. But if you ask that same question to a computer that's been trained to look at, by looking at thousands of images like this, a computer now can very accurately tell you the age of the patient uh, within a plus or minus a couple of years, the gender, whether this picture of the back of the eye is from a man or a woman, whether they smoked or not, what their blood sugar levels are, what their, their blood pressure is, whether they've had any heart, heart attacks or other cardiac events. So it, it, this just tells us that computers can gain insights uh, into clinical information that we wouldn't have thought of uh, through this uh, de development of these computer techniques called machine learning and artificial intelligence. And so we want to utilize the power of that to help uh, us manage as our patients. And just one other example um, is a study from Murfield's Eye Hospital 
which um, compared a computer looking at uh, patients who've been referred in with a possible wet macular degeneration compared to a group of retinal specialists and optometrists. And the once the computer was trained, it was as good as the best retinal specialist at making a correct um, diagnosis of wet AMD or not. And, and again, this just tells us that increasingly we're going to be using computers to help us manage patients and get accurate diagnoses in the future. So our study is in, interested in looking at early AMD. Um, and what I'm showing now is uh, one of the first of three slides that I had to put together for a 10 minute presentation to the Wellcome Trust. And on the basis of these three slides, they were either going to give me four million pounds or they weren't. So each slide is worth um, over a million pounds. And uh, every second I spoke was worth over 6,000 666 pounds. So I had to make every word count. And I'm not going to go in detail through my presentation, but basically what I said to the Wellcome Trust was that patients with early AMD sometimes progress to the more serious late forms of disease, such as wet macular degeneration or uh, geographic atrophy or dry, severe dry AMD. And sometimes they don't. And, and we don't know who's going to progress and who isn't. And so what we wanted to do was to really look closely at these patients and follow those patients with um, early AMD to try to figure out what caused them to progress. And that would give us better insights into uh, how to treat people and how to stop them progressing. And so, we are in this study, we are taking very detailed photographs. Um, some of the ones that you'd, if you come up to the hospital, you'd be familiar with uh, what are called OCT scans. Also uh, looking very in great detail at the blood vessels, the back of people's eyes. And we're also using um, uh, a technique called adaptive optics. Um, adaptive optics is what's in the Hubble Space Telescope. It allows us to look at very high resolution at uh, cells at the back of the eye. So we can look at individual um, cone cells, so individual photoreceptors, the cells that sense light. And we're hoping by looking at people at, at, at these early stages at, at great detail at, at the structure of their eyes, that we'll be able to um, work out what are the early changes in which layer of the eye that lead to progression. And um, if we do this, we should be able to come up with uh, tools that can help uh, predict who's going to progress, who needs to be seen in the hospital, who's, who's less likely to progress and be managed in the community. Um, it will allow us to develop um, endpoints for clinical trials so we can uh, run tr trials more quickly to find better therapies and it'll give us an insight into the what's still not fully understood about why patients progress with age-related macular degeneration so um this study is in happening in uk particularly um in Southampton, where I'm based, but also uh, with Professor Shubha Sipper Passad in Murfield's Eye Hospital. And um, so we'd love to have patients with early AMD, those patients who haven't required injections in an eye yet, who might be interested in this study. Um, and we'd like to recruit them and see them three times a year uh, for three years. And that would be really helpful to get some more patients to help push this study forward. Um, and this may sound like science fiction about um, computers managing patients' eyesight, but it's actually reality. And what I'm doing now is showing a video of a 
uh, a system that's been developed that has been approved for clinical use in the United States for managing patients with diabetic eye disease. And that uh, in this country, we have thousands of people grading diabetic uh, uh, eye patients photographs. But this system that's been developed with uh, machine learning out, out, uh, um, allows a computer to take computers without any help from a technician. And then within a few seconds, it analyzes those photographs and says whether it is, um, there is a diabetic eye disease or not. Now, normally this process could take weeks for uh, patients to be seen, their photographs sent to um, a hospital to be read, but now the whole procedure just takes a few minutes. And um, the, wait, the waiting time for diabetic retinopathy screening in some cities in the United States has been reduced from two years to you know, a couple of days because of the, the system. So I, I think we're gonna see much more of this in the UK and, and with computer guided systems managing our, our eye diseases, particularly the common ones such as age-related macular degeneration. Now, another study I'd like to mention is uh, one for a condition called central serous chorioretinopathy or, or CSR. And this is a study that I led um, looking at a drug that is the commonest drug used to treat this condition um, around the world. And we uh, ran this study in over 20 clinical sites around the country and uh, testing whether this drug helped people with this condition. And I'm just gonna show you a video uh, or, or it explains this, uh, the results of the study. Are you in the dark about how to treat chronic central serous chorioretinopathy? A pleridone, ah, developed for treating heart failure is widely prescribed to manage CSCR, even though it can have rare but important side effects. But does it work? A British research team working across 22 NHS hospitals ran a clinical trial to find out. They randomly assigned 114 patients to drug or placebo and followed them for up to a year. CSCR causes fluid to accumulate under the retina. Many anatomical measures were taken. But the primary aim was how well the person could see. How well people could see was measured by how many letters they could read on the letter chart. Over 12 months, the placebo group showed a small improvement in vision, as CSCR can naturally come and go over time. Then how did a pleuronome do? Eplerinone showed the same small improvement over 12 months, so Eplerinone does not work for CSCR. All the other things we measured have shown the same thing. The findings are particularly credible because almost all patients attended almost all visits and engaged in the study as planned. So the study had more data than expected and the researchers are really sure Eplerinone does not work for CSCR. A hey, cheer up. At least this knowledge will stop the clarinone being used to treat CSCR to no avail, and future research can focus on finding a treatment that does work. And you can help. Watch out for future studies that you can sign up to as a health professional or patient. So we, we pr pr produced this video um, to... Um, make it easier for patients to understand the results of the study. So as, as it um, mentions, uh, we find this drug that is the commonest used treatment for this condition actually doesn't work. And while that's disappointing, it's an important result uh, because it can have serious side effects. And it means that we can now devote our efforts to looking at other uh, potential treatments for this condition. Um, so as I say, 
clinical trials don't always come come up with a positive result, but even a negative result like this is, is hugely important. So I'd like to now move on to the last clinical trial that I'd like to talk about and uh, that I'm involved in, and that's the study of a condition called Stargardt's disease, which is the commonest form of macular degeneration in the young. And the main problem with Stargardt's disease is that the eye cannot metabolize vitamin A properly. And so waste material derived from vitamin A builds up in the back of the eye, and this is called lipofusion. And this lipofusion material is very toxic to the eye and subsequently leads to retinal uh, degeneration and loss of cells that sense light. Now, <clears throat> through serendipity, a drug called Soraprazan was developed uh, as an, an anti-ulcer drug, a proton pump inhibitor. And as it was going through its uh, development as a stomach ulcer drug, it was noticed that it had a property that it could remove lipofusion from eye cells, which was a totally unexpected uh, uh, finding. So researchers then tested this drug in uh, mice that had been genetically modified so that they had Stargardt's disease. And in mice that were given the drug, uh, their eyes stayed healthier for longer and responded to light better than mice that didn't have drug. And that suggests it may be a, a useful treatment for, for Stargardt's disease. So uh, the study has been set up uh, across Europe um, and Southampton is the only site in the UK for this study. It was funded by the European Union, 5.7 million euro grant. And ongoing clinical trials are happening here in Southampton, also the Netherlands, Italy and Germany. And just this week, we've recruited our last patient we need for this study, and we'll be following them up over the next year to see whether taking this uh, drug will be helpful for patients with Stargardt's disease. Um, there currently isn't any treatment for Stargardt's disease, apart from avoiding excess vitamin A and avo avoiding excess sunlight. And so this would be very helpful if you could take a tablet that would prevent your disease from progressing. Um, and so we, we look forward to the results of these, this study in, in due course. So in summary, clinical research is helping us develop new therapies for many forms of retinal and macular disease. Research is expensive. The three studies I've mentioned together cost around 10 million pounds. And, and so it is great and essential that the Macular Society funds research. And I'm very grateful it's one of the uh, few eye charities that actually does fund research as opposed to just providing supportive care. So its work is vitally important if we're going to develop better treatments uh, to prevent these conditions prog progressing. So as a result of the studies I've mentioned, hopefully we'll have um, better ways to manage Stargardt's disease, early age related macular degeneration, uh, and central serous choriretinopathy. And I hope that um, update was helpful of where we are in terms of these trials, and I'd be happy to answer any questions. Thank you very much.